In a great crusade like this, thousands of people come forward to receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. Many people are always asking, do these so-called converts last? I never call them converts. I always call them inquirers because they're inquiring the way to heaven and to forgiveness. I think also we could call them seekers because some of them are seeking the way of salvation, but they do not become finders. But every night when I give an invitation for people to receive Christ, I know that there are many who do find Christ. I also know that many of those who come forward will not last because Christ taught us in his parable of the sower. In the 13th chapter of Matthew, he said that he was a sower that went forth to sow and he said that the seed was the word of God and it falls on various types of soil and brings about different types of reaction. And Christ said that some of those that were converted under his ministry would not last. In fact, he had a team of 12 men. One of them's name was Judas, and he betrayed him, and he lived close to Christ for three years. Another one denied him. And so we know that in a crusade like this, where thousands of people are coming to surrender themselves to Christ, that some won't last. D.O. Moody, the evangelist, was walking down the street one day and a man pointed to a drunk man, a friend of his, pointed to a drunk man over against the saloon wall and said, Mr. Moody, there's one of your converts. And Mr. Moody said, it certainly does look like one of my converts. It's certainly not the Lord's. But I know, but I know that there are thousands of others that do last. And this room tonight is filled with hundreds of people that have found Christ in the last few days and you're carrying your Bibles You've already identified yourself with the church or you've renewed your church vow and dedication and now your life is completely transformed. I remember nine years ago in Los Angeles, we were holding a great crusade. It was the first uh, extensive crusade that we'd ever conducted. We went for eight weeks in Los Angeles at Washington and Hill Street. And Life Magazine became interested and so they came out to take pictures and there were four rather prominent people who had come to Christ, among the many others. We never do announce the names of people who come to Christ in our crusades since that day. Many prominent people have come forward in our meetings and we try to protect their privacy because we believe that God would have it that way. And we try to respect their right to find Christ without publicity. But on that occasion, when it was our first crusade, these four were publicized. And I remember that one of the reporters said to me as the picture of these four was being taken, he said, I'd like to see them 10 years from now. In other words, very cynically, he was saying, I don't think they'll last. Well, tonight, we have three of those four on the platform. Several weeks ago, we contacted all three of them and asked them if they'd come. In fact, we contacted all four because all four of them have lasted and all four of them tonight are either partially or wholly in Christian work. And I want them to come to the platform. The first one is Jim Voss and Louis Zamberini and Stuart Hamlin. I want them to come up right now and then I'm going to tell you about each one of them and just in a sentence or two, I want these three men to tell you how Christ changed their life. Their picture was in Life magazine Nine years ago, people weren't sure they would last, but here they are nine years later. The second man is Louis Zamberini. Maybe many of you remember the headlines in 1936, some of you older people do, because Louis Zamberini was representing the United States in the World Olympics in Berlin. He was the great Olympic miler, and he was the man that climbed up the rice stock and pulled Hitler's flag right down from the top. And the whole world gasped, and it became an international incident. During the war, Louis Zamberini was an American war hero. He was 47 days on a life raft floating around in the Pacific. And he began to drink when he came home, and he was confused and frustrated and mixed up in his life. And he too wandered into that tent on Washington and Hill in Los Angeles and found Christ as his savior. And tonight, he is the director of the Victory Boys Camp for juvenile delinquents in Los Angeles, giving his full life now to try to rehabilitate juvenile delinquents 
and lead them to a knowledge of Jesus Christ. Lewis, we're delighted to have you with us tonight. Thank you, Billy. It was after the war and with about $10,000 in back pay from two and a half years in prison camp and also uh, collecting my life insurance for being dead, <laughs> I became uh, extremely uh, selfish, cynical, and greedy until the uh, wind was finally let out of my sails. I lost everything that I possessed outside of my wife and little girl. And it was then that my wife was able to persuade me into going down to that meeting at Washington and Hill Street in Los Angeles where I heard the gospel from Billy Graham's lips. And there as I sat in the meeting, I heard Billy Graham when he stated that God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, could forgive me for my sins, and then if I put my trust in him, I could have eternal life. And so I went forward in that meeting, I asked God to forgive me for not having kept many promises I made on the raft. I acknowledged to God that I was a sinner. I asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come into my heart and save me, and of course he did. Since then I have had an unquenchable joy of working with these uh, wayward boys and uh, also preaching to them the same gospel that I heard nine years ago. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lewis.